Ross and Sukuk with Crime Watch UK. As a direct result of last month's programme, somebody has been arrested in connection with the theft of several diamond rings from an Oxfordshire jeweller. The SS Great Britain has received its stolen silver collection back and a man has been arrested and charged with the murder of his next door neighbour. Our first case this month is one of those bewildering crimes where it's hard to see a motive. It's difficult to imagine why anyone would want to cause the tragedy they did. As you watch our reconstruction, is there someone you can help eliminate? And is there any one you suspect could be involved? It took place in Suffolk four months ago. At the age of 21, Karen Hales had been a mother for 18 months. She lived all her life in Ipswich in Suffolk, and worked part-time in Boots, but she spent every hour she could with Emily. Karen was a very caring mother. She was very bubbly, real outgoing girl, full of confidence and devoted to Emily and her mother. Wasn't she, Jerry? Yes, she was. She's very special to all of us. A lovely daughter and my best friend. She's very caring, too caring. I thought of other people more than she did herself. I met Karen at school. One day she came up to me and asked me out very openly. That made me feel good. That's the sort of person she is to sort of come up to you and sort of speak her mind. Um, we went out with each other for six years. We were very happy together in them years. When she got pregnant, we were very happy. So we went and bought a house. They bought a starter home in Ipswich in Lavenham Road and had lived there for a couple of years. On Saturday, the 20th of November, Peter had gone out with workmates. Karen was too frightened to call out. Peter? Sorry, were you asleep? Oh, no. No, how did it go? Oh, all right. We just went up the swan. Everything right here? Well, um, no, I had a bit of a fright. I was sitting in the living room and I thought I heard a noise. So I went to the front door and somebody was trying that. Although their house hadn't been targeted up to now, there had been a spate of break-ins in the area. Well, no, they weren't there for very long. Well, it's probably only kids anyway. Yeah. The next day was Sunday the 21st of November. Karen, where are my socks? They're in the second drawer. Right, come on then. Put that down. Go and say so long to Daddy then. There we go. All right, love, see you later. All right. Oh, wait. Well, I've still got time to take you over to your mum's if you want to go. No, it's all right. Me and Emma are going to clean, aren't we? Oh, all right. Bye. I'll see you later. Bye-bye, Emily. Bye. Bye. Peter was on a late shift and had to go to work at 4 o'clock that afternoon.
Near Ipswich town centre is the bus garage where Peter works. At 4.15 or so, Karen's parents called to see him. Is that you, Peter? Oh, all right. How are you doing? All right. Wondered if you could have a look at the car. It's start a motor's plane up again. Ah, no Oi, problem. Peter, you got a spanner? No, Nigel's got it. Hey, is Karen at home? Yeah, I asked if she wanted to come over to you, but she said she'd rather stay at home and get some housework done. Oh, well, we'll pop round and see her in a minute. Two locals were taking a short cut into Lavenham Road, near Karen and Peter's house. We saw a man. I was going to ask the time, but I didn't get a chance because he was walking so fast. All I remember about him was he was wearing a parka with uh, grey fur around the hood. The man walked out onto the main London road, where a couple were driving home. She looked better, but she still looks tired. What on earth is he doing? We noticed a chap barely agitated in the central reservation. As we got closer to him, I thought, he's going to make a dash for it. And sure enough, right at the last minute, he did. I thought he was suicidal. He was wearing a dark parker coat with a grey trim. He appeared to be slim build, dark short hair, around about 20, 25. About now, the two boys were passing Karen's home. We were walking across the green, when I looked over that house, is that smoke over there? That's nah, just condensation. Mm. A local oh, resident oh. was in Chantry Park, about 400 yards away. Hello, Risky. Come on, then. There's a good boy. I decided to take the dog for a walk, and I just left the car park and noticed a person moving in the distance. I noticed him because he was running bent over. And then he hesitated and stopped and stared. And I just felt that he was acting strangely and thought he'd been up to no good. I suppose he was aged about 20 to 30 years old, and he was wearing a blue-grey parka coat with a hood. About the same time, Karen's parents reached Lavenham Road. Karen? Karen? It's funny, it's open. Karen was discovered by her father. She'd been stabbed several times, and her body had been set alight. Her daughter, Emily, was in the same room, but had not been injured. If there's any mum out there that is hiding anything, they just want to imagine what it's like. Every morning, Emily cries for mummy. During the day, she's asking where mummy is. Mm, we, Peter and I, do the best we can, and Graham, but we don't take the place of mummy. John Saunders, why? I mean, what's your guess? Why did it happen? We don't really know what the motive was in this case. As you can see, Karen was a loving, caring person with no enemies at all. What we do know is that items were stolen from the house, so we cannot rule out the possibility that it was a burglary. This um, is an identical purse to the one that uh, was stolen. Now, this is a fairly common sort of purse. Uh, lots of these around in Britain, so please don't ring us just because you've seen one. But we are interested, presumably, if you've seen one thrown away around the Ipswich area. Yes, certainly anything that, of that nature that's been discarded since November we would be extremely interested in, or whether anyone's been in possession of that. And uh, a couple of knives as well. Again, there the are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of these in the UK. They don't just ring us about these. They're laser knives. It's just if you've seen them thrown away in a bin or under a hedge or, or something like that in a way that could be, could be connected to this. You want more, more witnesses in, in Lavenham Road, I gather, still, despite all your extensive inquiries? Yes, we've traced over a thousand people in connection with the inquiry, but we still have people unidentified that we can't put names to. This guy wearing the parka, just go into his description a bit more for us. Yes, he's described by various witnesses, and it may be that there's more than one person wearing a parka, but it's a parka with a fur hood. He's aged between 20 and 30, about 5 feet 10 tall, slim build, with thin... Uh, dark hair, uh, which is cut fairly short. And whoever 
killed Karen would have been presumably heavily bloodstained. Yes, I'm certain that that's the case, that uh, the clothing would have been heavily bloodstained, and I would appeal for anyone who knows of somebody who was bloodstained on that day or who's discarded their normal clothing to contact us. Sunday the 21st of November. There's a reward, as though that was necessary in a case as, you know, really despicable as this. If you can help anyway, the number here in the studio is 0500 600 600. Or you can ring the incident room at Suffolk Police Headquarters. That's 0473 613 577. There it is, 0473 613 577. Well, since last month, there have been three arrests on photocall cases. Police were looking for a woman in connection with a series of deceptions. 50 viewers rang offering information. Several gave an address in the Republic of Ireland. And lengthy extradition proceedings might have followed. But having heard she was on Crime Watch, she left Ireland and moved to Dublin in Wales, where she was promptly arrested. She pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 18 months imprisonment. From last month's gallery of faces, the man bottom right was wanted on a murder charge. A viewer rang to say she'd seen him two weeks earlier in Luton. The man had been using a false name, Alfred Walker. Next morning, in a quite different part of the country, another viewer saw him, in fact, in a clothes shop in Newcastle upon Tyne. The store assistant was so certain it was the man he'd seen on Crime Watch the night before, he followed him out of the shop, noted where he went, and summoned the police. The suspect gave his name as Alfred Walker. He's now, in his real name, being charged with murder. And the man top right was wanted in connection with the theft. A few days after the programme, a Crime Watch viewer rang the incident room suggesting a name. A man's now been arrested and charged with two offences of theft. And now here are Detective Constable Jackie Hames and Superintendent David Hatcher with this month's photo call. First, have you seen this man recently? He's Colin Anderton and Cambridge Police would like to speak to him in connection with a murder. On Monday the 31st of January, Julie Hughes was found murdered in her home in Fenditton, Cambridge. Colin Anderton's car, a red Ford Sierra, registration G325NEW, was found three miles away on the Gog Magog Hills. Colin Anderton's 47, 5 foot 9 of medium build and has a moustache. He also has a distinctive scar from his left ear to his chin. If you know where he is, please call. If you work in the auto trade, this man may be familiar. He's James Patrick McHale. Our colleagues in Norfolk would like to talk to him about a series of thefts and deceptions. James McHale owned Tirewise, a business selling tires in Great Yarmouth. The company has now ceased trading, leaving thousands of pounds in debts. Mr McHale and his wife Dawn left their house in Hemsby last October and haven't been seen since. James McHale is five foot six and heavily built. He may now be clean shaven and is known to use several aliases, including Gerald Patrick Murphy and Patrick Gerald McHale. If you know where he is, please call us now. If you recognise this man, you may help solve a series of armed robberies in Leicestershire. He's seen here last summer robbing the Alliance and Leicester Building Society in Odeby. After passing the cashier a note, he demanded money and then threatened her with a handgun. He's in his mid to late twenties, around five foot ten, with ginger hair. If you know him, call us tonight. If you travel regularly on intercity trains, you might have seen this man, Richard John Whiteside. He's a frequent British Rail traveller, and here he is withdrawing cash from the Royal Bank of Scotland in Macclesfield. During the past six months, credit cards have been stolen and used fraudulently around Manchester and the North West. Richard John Whiteside is 26 years old, 6 foot 2 of slim build and has thick black hair. He also has mum and dad tattooed on his hands. If you know where he is now or if you can help with any of our photo call cases, please call us. Here's the free call number 0500 600 600, 0500 600 600. Last month's reconstructions prompted something like 800 calls, mostly on the murders of Samantha Bissett and her daughter Jasmine. You may recall a clinical psychologist hoped the killer might even call in. He hasn't done so, so far at any rate, but detectives have a lot to follow up. They still, though, need to find and eliminate this van, seen in Plumstead last November. Notice in particular the curtains in the window. Please call if you recognise that vehicle. There were a lot of new leads on the armed robbery in Burnley, in which a police officer was shot. Little, though, alas, on the murder of Paul Logan. Mark you, these things can take time. Back in June of 1992, we reconstructed clues to a rape in Wiltshire. A woman had been attacked after an evening class in Swindon College. A viewer saw the programme and proposed a name. Now, almost two years after the crime, a man has been arrested and is now awaiting trial. 
Another more recent case has also led to an arrest. You may remember last September, we showed how a hairdresser coming home from work was attacked and almost killed, in fact, near riding stables outside Darlington. A viewer rang in with the name of a man who has now been charged with rape and a number of other serious sexual offences. One of the most frightening kinds of crime, and also luckily one of the most unusual, is where people are confronted in their own homes. Kent police are hoping someone tonight will recognise the descriptions of two armed men who put a jeweller and his family through an ordeal lasting nearly 12 hours. It happened less than four weeks ago, so the family is still suffering very much from shock. Our reconstruction begins early in the morning on Saturday, February the 19th, in Deal, in Kent. At a quarter to seven that morning, as Shanine Tester was beginning her Saturday paper round, she saw two men in a parked car outside her house. Um, I thought it was a bit odd because not many people sat outside in the cars. And when I got to the bottom of the path, the driver got out and we looked at each other. And he looked like he'd been in the army or somewhere by the haircut. And he looked like he liked going abroad because he had a really nice suntan. An hour later, the Blue Sierra was still parked in Rectory Road. Just round the corner lives Chris Howe, who owns a jewellery shop in Deal Town Centre. Good afternoon. Oh, hello. So this is Roberts. Of course, of course. I've been in business here in Deal as a, as a jeweller. We opened in uh, September 1985. We've got a full retail business with a, with a workshop. My father was a jeweller, had a retail business in Margate, and... Uh, so that's where I learnt the trade. That's so, uh, We've lived in Deal for the past six years. It's a family town, really. A lot of character. <laughs> Our two beautiful daughters, <laughs> Eleanor and Carla. So I'm married to Monica, who's German. Ice skating's on. Oh, Carla, would you switch to the channel, please? It's now early evening on Sunday, February the 20th. Monica's mother was over from Germany, staying with the family for a while. Oh, decent, die Franzose schon da. Tobel und den kommen next, glaube ich. Ja. Darling, can you watch my back? Yes, yeah, sure. Being a jeweller, Mr. Howe was always apprehensive when there were unexpected callers. Get the police! Calm down. Calm down. Keep quiet! Don't move. Eyes down. Don't hurt her. She's old and she doesn't speak any English. Get on the floor, hands behind your back. Look, we're not going anywhere. Don't handcuff me. I'm not going to cause any problems. They were obviously, uh, you know, t two very professional guys. Don't look at him. Look at that floor. They were smartly dressed. Trousers were neatly pressed, shoes polished. When they made signs to each other, it was normally by hair movement or finger movement and gestures. Everybody behave. Nobody gets hurt. The big impression I got that they, they seemed to be of a military type. They were, they were very frightening and we were terrified. And uh, that, that continues through the night. Get comfortable. It's going to be a long night. I just remembered keeping the girl's head down, especially Elena, because once in a while she seemed to want to turn around when she heard a movement. And his eyes. Keep your eyes down, don't look at him. Everything went through your head, what, what might could happen. And I just 
I didn't want any one of us to look at him because I thought he just won't know, you know, the girls. It's now 5.30 on Monday morning. Go to the bathroom, have a wash. Put on a clean shirt like you normally would. You're going to work now. You know what I mean, don't you? It must have been because he was so close to me that I, I then realised that he, he had a northern to accent. You do exactly as he says. Man two, um, I suddenly realised that he had changed his disguise and now it, he had a very thick blonde wig on and he'd put glasses on. I thought were quite feminine. The younger man had changed his glasses as part of his new disguise. As Chris drove him to his shop, the older man was keeping watch on the rest of the family. It was at this point I thought whether I should, you know, try and do something, drive off into a brick wall or through a shop window, try and do something to distract him. But uh, I was so, so scared for my family at home who were still with the other gunman that uh, I decided just to go along and do what he said. Get out of the car and open up the shop like you normally do. Don't turn round, I'll be 20 yards behind you. Sweet. It's sweet. All right. How's your husband? He's down the shop. Keep quiet and don't move. The road sweeper and the postman often meet in the high street at this time in the morning. All right, Francis. We don't get no warmer. We should be so lucky. I only had a brief glimpse of him. About five foot eight, 30 years old, blonde hair, fresh complexion, with a well trimmed moustache. Did you see that? I don't think he's one of ours. Looks suspicious, doesn't it? Yeah. Within 10 minutes, the robber had filled his bag and was out of the shop. The car waiting for him was another Sierra. This one was a grey sapphire. Hello, can you hear me? I've got handcuffs on. I'm finding it very difficult to speak. I've got a jeweler's shop in Deal, 100 High Street. I'm there at the moment. I don't want the police to go to my home. There are men there with my family. They've been there all night. Back at home, Monica herself was now able to raise the alarm. Well, David Ross, how is the family now? That was a dreadful ordeal. Yes, it was. Um, the house are extremely traumatised by what took place. Um, they've got young children, as you've seen from the, uh, the video. They're extremely um, anxious at night. And at one time, um, Chris Howard said to them, turn lights off at night. Now they leave lights on. Um, they're not sleeping at all well. And indeed, the whole family are receiving counselling. It's going to take a long time to get over something like that. Yes, it is. What do these two men look like now? First of all, the older man was loosely disguised as a policeman. Yes, he was. Um, it's interesting, uh, he has a northern accent as such. Um, also, he had a distinctive uh, watch, a diver's watch, in fact. Um, he's the person that was seen the day before by a witness with a blue Ford Sierra um, watching the house and obviously watching Chris Howe's movements. The second man seemed younger. He was wearing the postman's jacket. Yes, he was. Um, again, he had a northern accent, uh, stronger than the first man, and um, he said a couple of distinctive things. Firstly, he warned Chris Howe when he was at the jewellery shop that he would slug him, uh, which is an unusual thing to say. And also, he said, it's sweet, it's sweet, on the phone. 
piercing blue eyes as well, and Chris thought he really did need those glasses. Some very identifiable jewellery was stolen. Yes, there was, um, particularly some platinum rings, two rings in fact, um, which um, only a dozen were made in 1993, which is the uh, date mark on the rings. Um, the hallmarks on the rings uh, is distinctive. It's rider and rider, R and R. And so these are particularly distinctive. If you were offered rings like that for sale, that would be absolutely crucial. If you recognise those men, if you can help in any way, you can ring us here in the studio. It's 0500 600 600. Or you can ring the incident room direct, and that's 0622 654 999. That's 0622, the code for Maidstone, 654 999. For the last four minutes, all 28 lines here have been jammed. So if you're having difficulty getting through right now, you're getting the engaged tone, please bear with us. Most of the calls are coming on the Karen Hales murder. One name has come up three times. Not, of course, conclusive, though. You may remember back in January, we appealed about a headless body found before Christmas under railway arches in Wire Street, Manchester. Six weeks later and 75 miles away, a man walking his dog in Cannock, Staffordshire, came across the head. DNA tests have shown that it belongs definitely to the Manchester body. This is a clay impression of the victim's face, painstakingly reconstructed by the medical artist Richard Neve. Now, do you know who this is? Someone you haven't seen for at least three months. He was white, he was aged 35 to 40, of average height and build, about 5 foot 9 and 11 stone. He had dark, wavy hair, cut short. And if you're a dentist or a dental technician, you'd recognize your handiwork. The victim had had extensive treatment to his teeth. Six crowns and a bridge, a lot of work, which would have cost, I don't know, 3,000 pounds, I'm told, something like that. If you're a dental technician, take a look at this too. Several crowns were fixed by a bridge made out of Rexilium V, an alloy which is imported from the States. Only 13 laboratories are known to use this technique in Britain. So if the victim's British, someone here must remember making up these crowns. If you think you've got a clue, do please call 0500 600 600 or ring Greater Manchester Police on 061, the code for Manchester, 856 4340. That's 061 856 4340. Well, one of last month's incident desk cases was sold shortly after the programme. The antique silverware collection stolen from aboard the SS Great Britain in Bristol was returned in a small green sack, all beautifully polished by two Hells Angels. The police are quite sure that the publicity on the programme had everything to do with its return. Well, now with this month's cases, here are Detective Constable Jackie Hames and David Hatcher. For our first case tonight, we'd like you to listen carefully to this conversation. We believe that was a man with a guilty conscience. The three nines call was made after a burglary just outside the village of Blackboys near Upfield in Sussex. On February the 3rd, a 76-year-old man and his wife were left bound and gagged by three men who made off with cash and valuables. The gang also stole the couple's white rover, which was found abandoned on February the 11th, 25 miles away in Crawley. We believe one of the robbers may have been worried about the victims who were left tied up in an isolated house. We'd like you to listen carefully to that voice once again. Uh, I'm, uh, I want to uh, report, I think there's a burglary going on. Right. It's uh, Black Boys. Right. What's the address? I don't know, I'm afraid. It's down near the river club is. So if you recognise that voice, please call Sussex Police on 0444-451-555. That's 0444, the code for Burgess Hill, 451-555. Our colleagues in London want to talk to these two men. They may have information about the murder of a 49-year-old British Rail steward. 
Basil Wycombe was described by colleagues and friends as a considerate and friendly man. He was gay and often went to bars and clubs in West London. On the 9th of January, he was outside the bridge in Fulham High Street. At about 1.15am, Mr Wycombe was talking to this man. He's about 35 years old, six feet tall, with dark hair and light stubble. Moments later, and a few yards away, Mr Wycombe was seen chatting to someone else. He was in his mid-twenties with short, mousy hair. About seven hours later, Basil Wycombe was found strangled at a house in Fulham. In his kitchen was a white plastic bag. Written on it was this text. Inside were two pancakes. If you work in a takeaway shop, do you remember serving Mr Wycombe? Or do you recognise these two men who may have been with him? If you can help in any way, ring the incident room on 081 246 0767. Or if you prefer, you can ring the independent organisation Gay London Policing on 071 233 0854. Do you recognise this man? On Monday the 7th of February, he threatened a 24-year-old woman with a knife and indecently assaulted her. The woman was on her way to Lingfield Railway Station when the man grabbed her from behind, forced her off the footpath and attempted to rape her. He ran off when he was disturbed by a train pulling into the nearby station. The footpath where the attack took place runs from Lingfield Railway Station through fields to the Lingfield Squash Club on Racecourse Road. That night there was a tournament taking place and we are interested in speaking to anyone who might have seen the attacker before or after the incident. Her assailant is white, in his early 20s, 5 foot 7 to 5 foot 9 inches tall, of slim build, with short fair hair. At the time of the offence, he was wearing a dark checked lumberjack shirt and blue jeans. Sometime after the attack, this knife was found discarded in Racecourse Road, near to the squash club. We believe it could have been used in the attack, but if you recognise it, please do call. Incidentally, about 10 minutes before the assault, a man fitting the same description was seen following another woman in Racecourse Road. She was wearing a yellow skirt and a black jacket. If that was you, please get in touch because you might have vital information. If you can help in any way, please call Caterham CID on 0883 342 263. That's 0883, the code for Caterham, 342 263. And the number here in the studio is 0500 600 600. That's 0500 600 600. And we've been asked by Sheffield Wednesday football manager Trevor Francis to make a special appeal on behalf of his first team. Their football kit was stolen from the Hillsborough Club ground in Sheffield on Monday of last week. That was the 7th of March. In the light of last night's result, maybe some of their luck was stolen along with it. Now, the Premier League shirts are unique. They have long sleeves and the players' names are sewn on the back there. I think I'll keep this one, actually. So if you can help, please call the South Yorkshire Police on free phone 0500 050 099. That's 0500 050 099. Murderous attacks by strangers are truly rare events. Now, of course, they're hard to solve, which is why so many finish up on Crime Watch. But find a motive and you often find the culprit. Can you help with our next case? It's an attempted murder, the attack on Ahmed Chowdhury, a West Country magistrate. It resulted in a stab wound to his arm, which almost cost him his life. Early on Sunday morning, the 16th of January, and Ahmed had lost a lot of blood. I thought I was dying, and I was thinking that, oh God, what have I done to deserve all this? What's going to happen to my children and family? Who is going to look after them? Ahmed and Fatima had been married for 11 years and have three boys. The oldest is now eight. Ahmed is a leading light in the local Bangladeshi community and sits as a JP. She's unemployed and I think we should reduce the level of the fine to take into account mm -hmm. her financial circumstances. Mm -hmm. There will be a fine of £30 and police costs... I have been a magistrate since 1991 at the Bristol bench. I attend the court once a fortnight or once a week. And the reason why I, I have become a magistrate is I feel that the people from ethnic minority should integrate with the, within the greater society and spend more time and get more involved. I'm also a businessman. I own few restaurants in Bath and Bristol area, and mo most of the time I spend 
at the Rajputin bath. I live in the same road as Mr. Chowdhury, and it was a Saturday afternoon between three and half past. I noticed two men walking up the road. One was an Asian and the other was a white man. What I noticed was the head of hair that the white man had. It was blonde and he had a black moustache, which seemed rather strange to me. When I came back 10 to 15 minutes later, I saw the two men walking back in the opposite direction, talking very intently still to one another, and they continued down the road. We're going to be extremely busy. For that reason, I want Ali to do the service, Rob to do the sweets and coffees. Nasser, you can go to the table, and Salim, you can go behind the bar. And make sure the bar is well stocked, because we're going to be very busy. <laughs> Dad's back. Why, it's a bit early for him. I thought I heard him at the door. There's no one there. Can I stay up and watch TV? OK, but it's early to bed tomorrow. Would you like to come around this way? You don't really off. Of course, sir. Would you like to take a seat? Second time when I heard noise, it was about 10 o'clock, and I went upstairs to have a look outside, and there was security light was on, and that time I was a little bit worried, and I was glad, you know, my son still awake watching telly with me, and inside me, I was frightened as well. Mom, I think I'll go to bed now. Just before 1 a.m., Ahmed left the restaurant for the three-minute journey home to St. James's Park. Did he go to that party? Fatima stayed up for him. <laughs> she often phones her sister late at night. Paul went. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So what happened with her admission? She did? Help! Help! I thought I disturbed some burglars. And it is only when I noticed that one of them wanted Help! to stab me, then I realized that uh, it was an attempt to kill me. Help! What's that? Hang on. Ahmed put up a ferocious struggle, and at first he didn't realize he was badly hurt. Call the police! What's happened? Call an ambulance! Are you all right? Get the police! Your flight two receiving, go ahead. Golf Bravo 52, proceed to St. James's Park Bath. Report of a serious stabbing. Ambulance en route. Over. Yeah, that's all noted en route. Three hundred yards away, two people were walking into Harley Street. We spent the evening at a friend's house. 
We were leaving and as we walked up the road, we saw an Asian man walking briskly towards us. I noticed him because he looked worried and we had to step to one side to let him pass. I was badly injured. The stab was deep and long, about five inches. Part of my arm will always stay numb. But I suppose I'm lucky that I'm still alive. Indeed he was. Mike Dunn, it looked like a minor injury at the time. He was nearly dead when he got to hospital. If it was only 50-50, he'd survive. You're still no closer to finding a motive, I gather. No, the motive's unknown. We've ruled out uh, robbery and burglary and theft, and we're quite convinced it's not a racial motive. Why? Why not a racial motive? One of the attackers is described as an Asian man, um, so we've got no reason to believe there was any racial, uh, racial motivation. We've got quite good descriptions of both the men. We've seen the Asian man a bit. The, the white guy, tell us about him. The white man is described as being in his 30s, between 5 foot 8 and 5 foot inch, eight, uh, 10 inches tall. He was wearing a navy top and navy jeans. Um, the most distinctive thing about this man is that he has strikingly blonde hair yeah, I mean, and a dark moustache. It's mustache. pretty certainly a wig, that, isn't it? Possibly a false moustache as well. What about the Asian guy? The Asian guy is a little bit younger. He's between 5 foot 4 and 5 foot 8 tall. He was wearing a fawn-coloured jacket. Now, the Asian guy ran down Harley Street. You'd think that the, the white guy probably went through the grounds of Bath High School. Where would he have gone then? That's right. The two men were seen early in the afternoon, and we're quite sure that they were the same two men who carried out the attack. The white man would have escaped, we think, through the back of St James Park, up into a high school, and then into Lansdowne Crescent. OK, well, if you can help in any way, please ring us here on 0500 600 600, that's in the studio, or the number for the incident room at Bath Police Station, that's 0225 842 455. Well, we're getting some very interesting calls now. We've had um, calls on a lot of our reconstructions on Karen Hale's murder. Quite a lot of calls naming names, and somebody's found a purse very similar to hers in Ipswich, so that looks hopeful. Uh, on the Kent kidnap, some very good calls too, with names and a military um, lead to follow up, and good calls on each of our four photocall cases, and on the yellow van that we wanted to, um, to find in connection with the Samantha Bissett murder. So it's, it's all coming in at the moment. That's all we can say for now, but if you think you can help with any of our cases tonight, please do call. We'll be back at 11.20 after question time with Crime Watch update. Incidentally, there is a Crime Watch file showing in more detail how the inquiries progress once we're off the air. That's a week on Tuesday, March 29th, at 9.30 on BBC One. Do remember, we've compressed isolated crimes into 45 minutes. These cases are unusual, and that's why we feature them. What's more, with luck, they're on the way to being solved. So don't have nightmares, do sleep well. Good night. Good night.